Hello and welcome to Stu's Review's 5 Minute Breakdown of Fintech in EMEA. I've been tasked with breaking down the biggest industry movements this year across two huge continents. So wish me luck, buckle in, and let's get cracking. If we're to start on my own continent, I think it's been very hard to miss the unicorns that have been strutting their stuff all over the payments industry. From Klarna to Checkout.com, there seems to be a huge movement to making things easier over here to buy. Unlike you guys who are still sending checks to each other, I think it's fair to say that both Europe and Africa have checkmated you when it comes to the payment scene. The number of monthly users of the Klarna smartphone app in the United Kingdom grew almost 200% year on year in February 21. And I brought up Klarna for more than one reason. Firstly, buy now, pay later. But I'll come to that in a little bit. But two, an interesting trend I think surprised a few people is that fintechs are becoming banks. Now, they're becoming the one thing they try to destroy. It's becoming increasingly hard to tell what a bank is over here, to the point where, in a classic European move, we have had to have a regulator step in to tell us what we could call a bank and what we couldn't. That's pretty boring, but this is because it was getting silly. And speaking of unicorns, one was at the heart of it all, Lannister, and not the Game of Thrones type, tried their absolute best to appear like a bank without any authority to do so. They had celebrity endorsements, glamour shots, the less about those the better, but no license. So what will we be calling a bank in the future over here? But yes, on to the big trendy fintech phrase that everybody on the street knows, fintech's finally gone mainstream. Buy now, pay later is a trend that has nearly caused more fintech panel discussions than people have actually used the damn thing. In a classic U-turn, the fintech industry, once so keen on opening up the financial services to the masses, has now found a product that might be too good for the masses. Calls of buy now, pay later services helping to create a new generation of debtors have hit numerous fintech conferences and even mainstream media. Whatever side you stand on morally, it's a sign that actual fintech products or brands are picking up public consciousness over here. Now, I've focused on the payment scene in Europe for too long. And looking a bit further south, the fintech scene in Africa and the Middle East is looking very sunny indeed. But look, this isn't going to be me rambling on about the MP, so that was so 2007. The fintech scene is going mobile in a more abstract sense. Cross-border payments are the big thing now, as borders are opening up, and the platformification of many payment options across countries, EcoBank, as well as the established banks offering their own solutions, means that banking innovation didn't stop during COVID-19. Uptake of digital and mobile payments was just as fierce as ever. And with bank branches scarce, it didn't matter if they shut during a lockdown. Now, fintech in Africa, again, is leapfrogging slower growth markets too, with its adoption of fintech within privatized businesses and industries like the Matatu buses in Kenya. With almost unlimited amounts of different companies and no structure to the bus times, the platformification offered by payment platforms has made catching Matatus with no cash seamless. But cash is still king. On the retail side, the opportunity in Africa is massive. Take Nigeria, for instance. You have 100 million people there with a phone, but no bank account. It's no wonder the likes of Kuda Bank are stepping up to fill this gap, priming them to become the next new bank. Moving up northeast to the Middle East, we're seeing that despite geopolitical tensions on the fintech scene, cooperation and collaboration continues to be the name of the game. As Abbas Bazrai, head of the financial services at KPMG in the Lower Gulf said, with UAE's AGM signed, an MOU with the Israeli Security Authority and Bank Hapolim to collaborate on fintech innovation initiatives, including supporting fintech companies looking to establish presence in the region. So, 
We're coming up to time here for my review of fintech in Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Can you ever summarize the financial industry of 2.2 billion people in five minutes? Well, whether I was successful or not, I hope I gave you all a little taster of all of the innovations you can see from my part of the world. So to everyone watching today at Fintech South, I hope you all have a great conference and I look forward to meeting you all in person next time and I'll see you in another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.